Warriors 22, Cowboys 14. Round 7, done. Back again with Ty. Ty, how are you feeling, bro? Hey, it's a win. You know, always feeling great after a win. Um, and, yeah, got to actually finally see the boys in, in the flesh. Um, so that was good, too. Always feels great after the win, my bro. So um, the scoreline 22-14, before I get into your thoughts on the game, is that a, is that a true reflection, in your opinion? Is that a true reflection on, on, on the game itself? Uh, yeah, I think so. Like, you know, we're probably a bit fortunate that um, a couple of people wanted to put their hands and legs out, so it could have been a lot more closer. Um, but I thought the the boys, the Warriors, were able to, you know, um, show their resilience again. You know, this this the same thing that keeps coming up, um, and they managed to kind of pull it back. So I don't think it should have been a blowout. I think it was a respectable score for for both sides. Yeah, absolutely, man. Twenty three thousand urging them on. Um, let's go through the try scorers on our side. For Noah Blake, that three minutes, bro. Three minutes. Finally. <laughs> uh, Edward Cossey's one, getting the offload from Montoya. Joshy Curran, bro, he loves that line, eh? Yeah. He loves that line from old 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 Sean. I think he scored maybe there's three tries this year off that same line, off that same delayed hold up turn pass into that gap. So he's he's loving he's loving that role. Uh, Walks gets a beat pie. Over on their side, mate, Toe Lungy on that left-hand side was just asking questions all day. Cotter, Valentine Holmes, and conversions. Valentine Holmes missed two. Um, I don't know if you noticed it, but at the stadium, when you kicked one of those goals, when you kicked one of those conversions, it looked like it went over, but the wind blew it back. Oh, what was even, like, to add on that, like, being there, you see how much the sticks move, eh? I was like, <laughs> this is going to be an interesting game for the kickers. No, nah, crazy. So, you know, had, had Valentine Holmes got those two then i suppose you know the score line would have been a little bit closer but then again sean missed two as well and you missed sorry you missed two conversions then you also missed the penalty mm. so anyway um over to you my bro uh thoughts on the game as a whole well hey we had a better start you know we've been asking for this for a while you know can we actually show up um at the start and and we did there was a few you know still errors and all that and i, I remember listening to Dylan at the end of the game, you know, just saying that the boys made it harder on themselves, you know, with a lot of those errors and, and a few penalties. Um, but, you know, good start. And I, I do have to say, you know, having someone like Tohu that came back in that stabilised the D, but also like he gave that pass to Adam Fanua Blake, you know, that little tip pass that led to that eventual try. So glad that we got that good start. Um, in terms of the game, uh, you know, again, the boys are they're sticking in the day and just being on mm. the ground too, they don't look like, you know, they don't look like they're going to falter as well. They look like they're just going to get into it and wait till the opportun opportunities present themselves. So, yeah, in terms of the whole game, beautiful. I think we we're a little bit fortunate that some of the calls went our way or some of the boys just, you know, managed to push them out. Um, but I think, uh, yeah, a really good gutsy win from from the boys. On that resilience, man, it was pretty much 20 minutes leading into the, leading into the, the second half. It was all them, right? And they're asking questions down our left edge, right? They were unfortunate that, I uh, can't remember who it was, Tolungi, I think, and his leg went out. But it was 20 minutes of sustained pressure. And I think it was nine minutes after the first half, it was back down the other end, and it was nine minutes of sustained pressure. And then we managed to take the ball down down the other end, and Joshy Curran's off the pass from SJ and um, and scoring a try. But no, they're definitely staying in the game, man. And, and um, like you said, you know, being there didn't look like they were, no one looked flustered, no one looked like they're losing their heads. Everyone looked um, pretty calm, pretty calm under a lot of that pressure, right? Eh? must be frustrating for them though not having to score you know for good good 30 minutes and sustain pressure i mean we've been in that situation where we've you know we've had the we've had the bulk of the the position and not being able to score 100 percent. and i think as a team you know like can be frustrating not scoring i think that's what's you know i think the warriors of old like if they wouldn't score too like you know mm -hmm. it was more the cowboys that were probably feeling the pressure but if you know the warriors wouldn't score you could see them they start trying stuff and even you know i haven't seen a game this year where they start trying their hand even more like yeah, there's been a couple of cases but i mean like has it been like a whole last 20 minutes chucking ridiculous balls you know doing stupid stuff it's just been like one-off incidences so that's what i'm liking is the warriors are like you know no matter what the time is, no matter where they're in the game, they're still going, okay, let's just get into the grind and we'll figure this out, you know? Yeah, and I'm just looking through the stats, man. So we're pretty much we're pretty much dominated by them by most of the game, right? 56% to them, position, their completion rate's 85%. Uh, on attack, they dominate most of the, of the stats. Where it gets interesting is in the defense, right? So our defensive tackle percentage, 93% to their 86%. We, we made more tackles, obviously, because they had more more balls. 
uh, we also had more more errors as well. And someone came on on after the uh, after the game and said we we beat ourselves. You know, we are our, we're our own worst enemies. Soft errors. Um, yeah, I suppose that's that's just something that you know coaching's got to work on. Hundred percent. And you can see some of the errors. Like a lot of it was it was the you know whether it was a drop ball or ball mm. behind. So you, obviously the boys are still working on you know their in chemistry and if they can you know get that right you know obviously we'll see an improvement um but yeah I again you know to be on the other side of those stats though you know like again this good signs you know you want to once it's all working good you know obviously hopefully the same system's still there and they go and pump them but you know to know that you know we got stats against us position you know barely any position you know making way more tackles which means you should be tired the boys are still pulling out a win so you know we got to be happy with that over the moon with that bro i suppose that that gelling and that um um yeah the gelling between the players comes into the next one which is which is our spine bro look i like lusik i think i think he's a safe guy um so we've got you know he's in for he's in for egan we've got walks at six sean johnson and shans how's how's that looking in your opinion bro yeah i think it was all right eh? i actually like i said in the previous um recap you know i'd like to see what dylan walker brings because he's got a lot of experience you know and he's he's won a ship you know he understands what needs to be done um and i thought he did really well especially defensively and then obviously you know the maturity you know to realize close to the line i could probably fake it and go you know there was just a lot there was a lot to like about his game there was a few things where i think it was the first error we had johnson chucked it to him and he went a bit too wide and um that led to peter hickey picking up so there was a bit of you know touch and go there um in terms of lusik yeah i don't think he's you know done too much wrong it's kind of like he's he's a good safe bet but you know, I think when you start getting deeper into the season, deeper into the playoffs, you're going to need a bit more X factor. So I don't think he's been bad. I just, you know, I think maybe, you know, definitely Wade Egan's probably got the position over him. But um, for both of them, they just got to show a running game. Like, you know, you got to still have a bit more running. So then it takes a bit more pressure off the others. But um, they haven't been bad. And then in terms of chances, you know, I think he had a, a really, you know, safe game himself. Um, there was a couple of times, but then I had to reflect on it where I was like, maybe it was a good thing, where he could have probably chucked the ball. Um, there was one specifically in the first, like, I think five or ten minutes where he could have just probably done a little bit of a loop ball over to uh, Dalen. But then I'm like, glad he didn't, because I'm like, the old mm. Warriors would have forced their hand and maybe would have chucked it all the way out. But, like, those ones where if you watch, you know, top four team, um, you know, if you watch uh, even, like, a, a Sharks, they will present that ball because all you need to do is put it over the top of Toe Lungi and Dalen would have just walked straight in. Mm. But you know, there's some kind of goodness about it because I'm like, oh yes, they're not frustrated or they're not trying too much. So in terms of the spine, I think it was the first time we got to see them all together. It wasn't wasn't bad. Um but I think also just Johnson, eh, we've seen a Johnson that can actually lead a team which is which has been helpful for the spine. And just going back to your comment on Peter Hiku, bro, are you are you happy to see him you know where he is now because uh, he was with us for a while uh, are you happy to see him it look, looks like he's enjoying his rugby it looks like he's, he's enjoying his time over there yeah you know for, for him as a player you know good on him you know obviously he's taking this opportunity and doing his mm. thing i actually liked when he was at the warriors i thought he was finding his feet he was probably one of our better players at that before he left to be honest um mm. i think you know everyone probably knows his history he's probably had an up and down career in terms of sometimes he's absolutely you know does some wonderful things and then sometimes he can go a bit missing but i always go back to he had to take on greg inglis at the height of greg inglis at center so you know this guy's built a lot of experience and um, i thought he did well with cowboys a few errors here and there but i love that he plays for the kiwis personally yeah yeah me too bro absolutely um cool um just a just a few fan questions i think this is getting quite a few comments on our TikTok. should Curran start yeah <laughs> that's a really good question so i want to be that guy and say no but for a good mm. reason so i think he's actually been massive like you know mm. work horse you can like i I don't know if he topped the tackles he should have topped the tackles but also you know the try awesome but i i I think with the current Warriors squad, I prefer Ford and Neo Kuri there. So it looks like Neo Kuri is back because then current can come on when the the Ford is the Fords are tired. Like I actually prefer mm. him to become off it now. It's not because I hate him as a player or anything like that. I just prefer him to come off the bench because let Ford and Neo Kuri like set that foundation. Mm. Then him and obviously SJ can kind of do their thing when they come on. Now 
He did lead to a try, so Cotter went straight through him. He but did. I think there was a bit of miscommunication between him and Johnson. Mm. Um, and also, like just rewatching it, the line didn't shift over. So Sean Johnson tried to make a play, and it obviously didn't pay off. And Curran bore the brunt of it because he missed that tackle. So long story short, I think Curran should come off the bench personally. Um, but I don't think it's because he's been actually a bad player. I think he just amps us up when he comes on, you know. So that's how I kind of see it. Yeah, so just for your, just for, you know, so Jazz Tavanga, most tackles, 47 okay. um, in that game. But yeah, I, I agree with you. He um, he comes on, he's fresh legs, comes on that, that, that kind of impact player. But, you know, there are other fans saying online as well on our on our comment section, he deserves to start. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, I think he deserves to start, but I think what, what Webby and what Job just said there, Webby has got him in a very specific role to come on for for Ford or new Kore when when those guys get tired right yeah man and like th- like the sharks game like how like we saw Curran, you know be able to pull all his energy and might into that 10 15 that he came on and he was bloody brilliant so the beautiful thing that worries have is that if one of those two second rows are not there we can slot Curran in um but i just feel he comes on and here's the new team well we've seen you know in, in past games, he you know rips it up, and I feel like Neil Kudia and Ford. I feel like they just take this thing out of the other team, and then he they've laid the platform for him to do his thing. So that's how I see it. Uh, traditionally, refs' calls have not gone our way. <laughs> um, so are refs biased when they come to refing our games? Ah, uh, yeah, man. Like again, as a Warriors fan, it's hard not to think that. You know, it's been so many years, and week in week out, some of the calls are just you know, real bad, um, you know, in the weekend, we're fortunate that there was a bunker, you know, if there wasn't a bunker, some of those tries would have been tries, you know, so yeah, it's hard, hard to not look at that. Um, I'm always reminded <laughs> that, you know, we shouldn't be putting the game into the ref's hands, you know, we should be playing in such a way that, you know, the ref's can't even, or the bunker could be a part of that, yeah. but let's be honest, you know, you're not going to always get games that are, you know, we're, we're blowing out, they're going to come down to 50 50 cores and you know we've always or well, not always but 95 percent of the time we don't we don't get those calls so it's that's frustrating it's frustrating as a fan and i know other fans feel that way um but uh, again you know we i think we kind of have to just constantly you know show that you know we're we're not fa- we're not worried by that you know we can still play but you know, and I think cool. You know, the worry us fans, we'll 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 say in the comments and do whatever we can to you know say it. But you know, it's always hard to do that post game because nothing's mm-hmm. going to change. Exactly, it doesn't help us if we lose. So I remember after the after the Bulldogs game, um, someone said, "Look, you know, had to battle the ref again. Um, even if they come out later on and say that they they messed up, it doesn't help doesn't help the scoreline at all, right?" Um, another one here is Montoya, man. Montoya at centre or wing? What's your what's your thoughts on that one? Do you prefer Montoya being a centre or do you prefer Montoya being a winger? Yeah, this is an interesting question, eh? Because, mm. um, bah, like, I can see why they did it. Um, mm. They obviously thought, you know, maybe putting him there and Vailia obviously um, dropped out to mm. bring back Dalen. Um, so I can see why they did it. Um, and he had that rampaging run that led to Kossi's try, which was, you know, him passing him back inside. The thing is, you know, over the years, and, you know, this might be something he's working on, um, he hasn't always been the one that gives that final pass. Mm. So, you know, if you're a sensor, you'd hope that they have, you know, obviously the vision to see if they can score it, go for it, but to give that extra ball. Um, for me, I want to let this sit, and let's just see if he stays at sensor for a couple of games. Let's see if he's, you know, um, is a good fit. I, I'm not mad at it. Um, but I do like Vailia. I actually like Vailia. I think he's got some challenges defensively, but attacking, I think he he can actually be really good. Um, and I do see he he can look for that pass. So I think for Montoya's game, defensively he's been, you know, I think they're pretty good. I don't know if they scored on like, can't remember what that kind of ratio of scoring over there, or even if they had any chance over there. But um, in terms of yeah, just that pass you know we'll see when he gets to put into a situation where he has to he could pass or score let's see what he does yeah because that was a bit of a scramble ball that one wasn't it it was kind of oh i'm just gonna i'm just gonna run through these guys and he must have fended off i think two or three i think drink water was maybe the last one um yeah and you just and i through. drink water yeah yep yeah no no i drink water i can't remember the other one but anyway 
he had the vision to to pop that pass up to up to Kossi, and it wasn't an easy ball for Kossi to get. Uh, but the fact that Kossi was there, running off running off the shoulder of his of his of his centre, right, that that shows that he's he definitely deserves his number two jersey, right? Yeah, man. No, I think I actually think you know there's a there's obviously four players, but um, stuff to work on, but. There's something there. I, I can I can definitely see improvements every week, and I, I think it's once he like gets in, like you can see once he feels confident, you can just see it. He then you you can see him play really well too. So I think it's more of a confidence thing for him. Yeah. Um, there was you know there was still a few mistakes, so we need to tidy that up. But um, yeah, I liked I thought the backline was cool. I was into um, Dylan Watson and Zelezniak, man. Shaky mm. first half, real shaky first half, but uh. A different player when he came back out in the second half. Yeah, hundred um, percent. It was good actually to be there on the ground, and the side he was defending um, was closer to us because we were on the west end. Um, and you know, last week I said you know um, because of the forwards, you know, being a bit shaking the forwards, then it kind of makes it hard for the backs to you know, make decisions. Mm. Um, now seeing it, uh, this one for Dalen's two, although one was only a try, um, he left, he gave too much space. He gave way too much space. So that, that was a winger thing. And I, I think he recognized that because the second half was a bit different. Mm. So yeah, he, I, I think to be honest, because he knows he's quite quick. I think he like kind of thought maybe I could give him a bit more space so I can help my, you know, inside out. But then it ended up, like this, that's the Queensland and also Australian winger right there, you know, yes, and he, he, he showed. Moped bro. Yes, uh, moped. Yeah. No so, way so rewatching again on the highlights too was a bit of a run on. So Peter Hiku came flying, gave that ball mm-hmm. out, and I think yeah, he just he got caught out. He got caught out, gave him a bit too much space. Because Peter Hiku came from his wing, right? Yeah, Peter Hiku came flying in, and then flying he gave in. that ball. So like they had a bit of a run on, and I feel like he got caught out because he was flat footed, but also he gave him too much space. If he was a bit more wider, he may have had a bit more of a chance. So there was also know, that, that there was also a crazy ball from bloody Granville, some sort of bounce pass ball that kind of threw everyone off i think and then you saw peter hickey running yeah, over and it then, was yeah, you know it was, I don't everyone know paused they, everyone, <laughs> everyone paused i don't yeah. know if they do that in training but yeah it was a good move it was a good move bounce past granville so yeah, yeah. um so just talk yes yeah, so i think dalen showed improvement off that but like what he's good at and this like i remember so as a warriors fan you know going to the games i remember there was a game where dalen was playing for the panthers and we had money on the wing mm. and what war um, what panthers did so well is that they'll kick it behind and he you know uh, unfortunately for us he would get behind manu and score the try so he would be they would be attacking panthers and he would sprint past uh, manu and get there now obviously he's a bit older a few injuries uh, not like that but watch his turnaround defense so that's one thing you watch around dalen i don't think they scored any try where they would chip it through because he's actually got a really good turnaround get back in either push their ball out i think there was one time he caught the ball and he chopped it and luckily i think it was current or someone jumped on it so they didn't score but he's got really good turnaround defense so he doesn't need to work on that he he kind of understands his presence i think it's just yeah getting that um you know where they need to stand wide or i don't know whether they need to communicate to get over so he feels confident but i looked at the draw next week too they switch sides so i think he's going back to his two and, and costi's coming back to the five so that'll be interesting to see what what difference that makes yeah so whether that's just the number change or whether that's actual positional change, we'll see if that makes a, a big difference um, going against the Storm. Why do you think Cowboys were quite obsessed with with Watanese Lesniak side? Maybe this guy's been out for weeks and we can we can score on him or I think so. I think they would have played into it, you know, first game back into, you know, the top. I think he played a New South Wales game. Um, you know, let's test him. That definitely would have been in it. I also think too, like just eyes up forty, when you actually go watch it back, um, a lot of our forwards were quite crunched into the middle, so you see Townsend and that stand a bit wider to the ruck um, that led them to like have a bit of an overlap. So it wasn't that we weren't numbered up right from the um, the dummy, like the play the ball. Um, it's just that a lot of our forwards were squashed in and then they mm. would stand a bit wider than them and then it looked like it had an overlap. So I think eyes up 40, obviously they thought about Dalen being there, but then you got Valentine Holmes and Murray Tuolangi wide, wide strike players. So I think it's a dominant side. It's also the good passing side. So I think there's a few things that reasons why they went that way as always uh let's look to the future big game anzac uh way to the storm 9 p.m over here just kick off over here in new zealand so i don't know why they don't put it on at like flipping three o'clock in the afternoon man make it a good time you know what i mean uh 9 p.m going over to the storm are you excited for that are you pumped for that uh definitely way more excited than previous years i feel like yes we've got a chance I feel like obviously Storm's 
lineup isn't like the old lineups and you know warriors are looking really well so feel good you know you go into this a lot more confident than previous years um to your question around you know the timing i'm like bro why don't they bring this bloody game to new zealand man like we've been playing in melbourne so long like yeah cool like i know we got a big contingency of new zealand fans over there but six years i think it's been over there we haven't even seen them over here once so it'd be good to see an anzac game back at mount smart um and seeing the storm um but yeah feeling confident about this game but um I think that they switch in position. I think it's a good switch. I think it's the right switch. Uh, we'll see what impact that has because I know Warbrick's been creating a bit of trouble um, running that wing, and then you've got Coates on the other side. So mm. you're going to have to be, you know, really um, not just good out, outside, but our forwards are going to have to be making sure they're shifting. Yeah, it's going to be a tough one, right? Um, we've got some in. So Marata Nukore, I think um, he's going to be he's going to be pumped to come back in. Yeah, yeah Tena. The life of a pippy, the first thing of a pippy is shut your pie hole. <laughs> Who wrote that? Hariatu, <laughs> Hariatu san. I'm on a phone call. <laughs> we talked about this last week. We got a bit of depth. Um, not like a lot of experience, I guess, on the field, but you know, I feel we've seen glimpses of some of these new players coming through that, you know, they can handle themselves up there. Um, be interesting to see um, after Storm's loss last week, too. They got, they got a bit. You know, physically out, out, out match last week. Um, and I think that's just kind of the same presence we have to have um, going into this game as well. We don't have to be over the top, but if you go watch the highlights of that Sea Eagles and Storm game, oh man, there was some major hits in there. And I, I think as professionals, you're not scared of the physicality. You know, that's part of the game now. Um, but I think it was that pressure. It wasn't necessarily the hits that was like probably scaring Storm. It was like, shucks, if we don't, you know, if we make a mistake, if we dig too far in that line, we want to get whacked, mm. you know, so I feel like Warriors have to bring that, and I think having New Kodia back, he, mm. he brings a bit of that, you know, that to the team, um, and also I think Ford brings a lot of the other side, so I feel, yeah, I feel, think we're in good steads for this game, but um, Jerome Hughes, from my past memories, has carved us up a couple of times too, so uh, let's just hope we contain him in Munster. Um, that's the end of the show, bro. Appreciate you for coming on again, uh, up the waz. Um, Boys. No game this week, but um, as someone who came on the show said, bring it on. Bring on bring on the storm, and then we'll come back to Mouse Mouse Stadium and smash those chooks. <laughs> oh, yeah, this, this is a mean series of games coming up. I'm excited, but yeah, up the waz, always. So we've got, check it out, right? We've got storm, we've got the chooks, then we've got panthers, and we've got Bulldogs away. So the next the next four games. Storm, Chooks, Panthers, Bulldogs. Yeah, man. This is the test. This is what we've probably been waiting for as Warrior fans. Are we ready? <laughs> I think we are. Whether or not we can get W's in all in all four of those games, that's another story. But um the signs of the signs have shown so far that we've got the resilience, we stay in the game, we don't lose our heads. Um and as as Warriors fans, that's all we really ask for. W's are nice, staying in the game. Um, backing each other up, being there for each other. I'm pretty happy. I agree, man. Just get on the grind, boys, and we'll back you all the way. Let's go. Up the was.